to stay today because I have a wedding in Gilbert and I did my preparations uh, in Teresa's foundation, which we are now studying in the group I belong to. And it was wonderful to read about the foundation in Medina del Campo because she was all worried about getting it founded right. And so they had to celebrate mass in that hovel and then she believed they had to reserve the sacrament there. And of course they didn't. She found out a few years later that she didn't have to do that. It made her worry a lot because the Lutherans might desecrate it. That was her fear in Medina del Campo. Well, how important is the Eucharist to the Catholic Church? She knew that it made every difference between herself and the Lutherans. Every difference. At the beginning of this week, on Monday and Tuesday, the priests were in the spring conference with, uh, with Father Metz. I think his doctrine in liturgy. But Father Metz was invited there by the bishop to talk about the Mass, and especially about the sacrifice of the Mass. And especially in that regard about, about the offertory and all of the epicleses that happen in the various sacraments. And I want to share an important piece of that with you. In reading about the Jewish roots of the Eucharist, uh, uh, in Petrie's book, in Brad Petrie's book, he talks about this relationship between the temple here, the one we're sitting in, and the temple in heaven. And that in heaven, in the temple, that's where God dwells. And that there's an altar there. And there was manna there stored long before the Exodus. And that in the Exodus, the manna fell from the temple of God in heaven onto the desert uh, of Sinai so that they could eat. This was holy bread. This was manna. And the showbread that was always in the, in the tabernacle of the wilderness uh, always had flagons of wine with it. I didn't know that. And each day, the priest would come in and they would eat bread and drink wine as a thank offering. Not as a sin offering. That was the lambs. A thank offering. And so putting that together, uh, Petrie tells us that the offering that is made here on this temple altar is then taken by the angel of God and by Christ and mystically by the priest to the temple in heaven and placed on the altar there in front of the Father. Well, that's taken up this week on Monday and Tuesday, uh, on Monday and Tuesday by our speaker. Uh, Dr. Metz, and he talked about the absolute, essential, important piece the offertory plays. Now we just skip an offertory at our at our meetings here, but I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> After his talk and the bishop was taking voluminous notes, he wrote the entire time. And the wonderful gift that the offertory is, I want to share it with you, and then we'll figure out some way. Probably, I'll just always have the off offering of bread and wine there after after adoration so that we can do our work with it. That's the lamb. That's the lamb of our offering. You are the offerers. And so you bring this bread and this wine uh, uh, to us, to the, to the priest. But you have to do something with it. You don't just give it. Here it is. You need to do something with it. Because the lamb, well, the host that's in there, the priest host, can also be called the lamb. We've often done that. In the Eastern Church, it is always called the lamb. <coughs> a square, well, they have a, a communion loaf about that size, and it's stamped with a wooden carved out seal. And so when it's baked, you have this square in a triangle and some small squares, and the spur has the Lamb of God with his flag of victory mm -hmm. in it. And the priest takes a lance, it looks like a little spear about that long, and he cuts out that square called the Lamb. And then in his prayers, he pierces it with the lance as Christ was pierced in the side. So there's an immolation, actual immolation, physically done 
We don't do that, but they, they still do from the early centuries. And then this is lifted up and placed on the patent as the land that, that, that the community is now going to offer through the priest to God for its sins and the sins of the whole world. So you get the idea? Mm-hmm. All right. So you're going to probably see some restoration of the offertory and importance of it in liturgical practice over the next decade or so. But at least we will do it. And what, in, in the Old Testament, in the uh, type, people brought their offering for sin. So let's say that you are all middle class people who can afford a lamb. Otherwise you would bring two doves. Uh, if you were rich, uh, maybe Paradise Valley, they offer bulls. So, but we're lambs. We're lambs that some of us are probably turned out people. But the idea was that when you brought your lamb to the temple, that's the only place there were sacrifices, you had to lay your hands. This wasn't an apoplesis, but that's the calling of the Holy Spirit. You would lay your hands on that lamb's head. And you take all of your sins and name them and put them on the lamb. That's what they did. The lamb was then given to the priest and offered to God in sacrifice for your sin. The lamb took your sin himself. And so Dr. Father Metz said that the people need to put their sins on the lamb. And when I'm done talking, we're going to take just a couple of minutes, like two minutes to do that. One minute for sins, and then also the thank offering because of the bread and wine, because it's called Eucharist, Thanksgiving. So after you lay your sins on there, Lamb of God, you can address it, you can address this as Lamb of God, the Lamb God is, that we have provided now for God to give back to us as Eucharist, manna from the temple above, and we'll talk about that. I'm going to place my sins on the land. I'm going to place my anger there. All the times in my life I ever lost my temper. I'm going to place my greed there, whatever your sins are. Name them. And in in your heart of hearts, in your mind, in your imagination, you close your eyes if you want, you take your hands and place them over this offering. Not as an epiclesis, not calling the Holy Spirit down, that priest does that but putting your sins on that lamb here, the symbolic lamb. Then, after that, all of your gratitude, your gratitude for Christ's gift, your gratitude for being created in the first place, your gratitude that you have lived so long, that you're still here, gratitude for your children, gratitude for all of his blessings, gratitude for how beautiful nature is, and everything in it. It it can even be gratitude that a wren built a nest in your backyard and you got to watch it. All those things that you're grateful for and make your Thanksgiving offering over the land. Then when that's done, then the priest takes this land and he's going to offer it. First, we we pray over it. We we pray over it with an epiclesis so that it is consecrated, set aside for the, this Holy Eucharist, for this miracle. And, you know, we do that little, we do this part and then this part, that's what that is. But then Dr. Metz said an amazing thing. I did not know how well this tied to um, Grant Petrie's book. Namely, that in the Old Testament, the priesthood took the lamb and offered it to God, and then God took it to his altar in the temple of heaven through the priest, and then sent back man to feast, the banquet, the eating of the food of the sacrifice, the lamb that was then shared after it was sacrificed. And so, uh, Father Metz said, when we do this, a great mystery happens that we don't see with our eyes, but it nevertheless happens. He said, as soon as this is offered, and the offering happens at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, through him and with him and in him, that's when the angel 
people of God and Christ and the priests ascend to the tabernacle in heaven where God is and it's placed on his altar. And when it's placed on his altar, he accepts it. All of your gratitude, all of your sins, all of Christ's shed blood for your salvation, all in one package. I have never felt that I ascended. I don't bilocate. I'm just me. But mystically speaking, this is precisely what happens. And you find that in the first Eucharistic prayer. Mm -hmm. Send your holy angel to take this offering to heaven and place it on your altar in heaven. I mean, it's right there. You don't hear it that often because Eucharistic prayer one is long, and usually in busy parish life, we don't use it that often. That's precisely what this is about. The angel bears the offering from that we consecrate here. Your offering then comes to me, and together with you I offer it. The angel and Christ and the priest mystically take it to the altar of heaven, and then it is given back to us as what? Man. Our bread for the journey to the kingdom of God in heaven. It's our manna. It's our daily, it's our daily bread, uh, Grand Petrie says. And so we receive it and it heals our soul. But that's what it's about. I thought that was just too wonderful to just leave in my notes in a notebook in my office. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you just for maybe 60 seconds to lay your sins on this land that you have brought. And just do that in any way.